Uh, my name is Jen Sparks and I've been on Search and Rescue since 1998. Mike Moyer, 1993. Tim Seville Carlin, I've been on Search and Rescue since 1993 as well. Uh, my name is Stephanie Thomas, I have been on Search and Rescue for 11 years. My name is Cody Lockhart, I joined the team in 2010. Uh, why do I do this? Uh, I would say to give back to the community, volunteer, be part of a team, camaraderie, knowledge, skills. It's almost like selfish, like I get to give something to somebody else and that makes me feel like I'm a better person or more complete or it just, just makes me feel like I'm doing the right thing. And sometimes it's better to just be in the know than to be sitting on the outside, right? Like, if there's a big search going on, wouldn't you much rather be there and be part of that and be like in that than like reading the newspaper about it? I love it. I, I just think about stopping or retiring sometimes and, and what that day would look like. And, and I, just, I just love the, uh, the sudden nature of transitioning and stepping out into a rescue. And I can't imagine you know, not having that opportunity to do that. To be on the forefront of a rescue and organizing and planning and being around the team and then actually making a difference in somebody's life, it's, it really jazzes you up and it's hard to leave that. I, I, it's the same thing, I, I feel it, you know, every, every time I think about doing it, it's like this group of people and it's tra uh, transitioned and changed over the 25 years, but um, is always felt like a family and we're, we're all doing something different and we all show up to do a, um, a, a common goal and it's, it's really rewarding. The forefathers of our team have done a very good job of you know, having this family first or team first dynamic. We're not a team of hot rod ace mountaineers like maybe I thought, you know, looking from the outside. We're just a group of, of people that have learned to work well with each other. We do have the toughest time counting off. We have a really hard time counting off. Making teams. Yeah. Like count off by, you know, Threes. one, two. Yeah. Never works. Mm -mm. No one can get that right. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is not like your you know, cover of Outside Magazine, amazing rock climber. Like, this is a guy that owns a paint shop and like, it's me or Jen. Like, these are such normal people in the community. You would never pick them out of a lineup to be like, that guy rescued this person. But everybody has this kind of same gut feeling of like, I'm here for this community or like, what if I know the family or... I mean, these people have our backs all the time. Like, you're going out in the middle of the night, cold, wet, rainy, whatever the scenario might be, to maybe potentially find somebody or dig somebody out, whatnot. But you know that that person next to you has extra clothes, has extra food, um, which I do as well. And I can't tell you how many gloves I've given to teammates or helmets or, like you said, a pulley, whatnot. But that's just part of being a team. This team is so incredibly grateful for anything that this community provides because they would do it all themselves without anybody from the community giving them anything. I don't know if you remember, <clears throat> you had a shell pants of some sort that you tore on a rescue. Do you remember that? Yeah. You yeah. didn't have any money at that time to yeah. replace them and yeah. we drummed the money up as a yeah. team yeah. and bought you a pair yeah. of pants. And that was a really big deal for us at that time because we did it and we got yeah. Mike yeah. a pair of pants. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and that's how it was. I mean, we ponied up, I think it was three or five hundred dollars each to join the team to buy the, some, the radio and the pager. Yes, now that I see how much has gone into making a rescue happen, it's been 25 years of, of planning to make some of these rescues happen. It's literally taken that long. There's a humbleness that comes with being part of this team because it's not about the individual. No one on this team could do a rescue by themselves. Even though we're all impressive individuals, it takes the whole team to get any of it done. The real heroes of our team are our families. I mean, the support that we all have from our spouses, our friends, our kids, our bosses is, I mean, that's just amazing because it, it is. It can be a, a client meeting or a family dinner or Mother's Day, whatever it is. It can be a middle of the night call where everyone in your house gets woken up, the dog's barking. My husband will run around, help me repack the car, get food, 
hot water tea. Um, my daughter now is 12 and she's right on board as well. Like, what do you need? But, you know, as I'm leaving the house, my husband's like, make sure you come back. And my daughter's like, really, do you have to go? If it's somewhere far away or, you know, we had something important that night. My wife putting up with it is, is, um, is amazing. And we've had the talk sometimes, you know, dinner's hot, the baby's crying and I'm like, out of here, you know, uh, see you later. And, you know, on occasion, she's roll, she rolls her eyes and is like, uh, but, um, you know, we've come to this agreement of, um, it's something that gives me so much pleasure. It's something that our community needs. And, you know, um, I had the talk that I need to know that I, you got my back 100% when I'm going out there, that I'm not a little bit of, um, <laughs> feeling bad that I'm leaving you hanging. And, and she's like, you're not leaving me hanging. I always feel fear to run out the door. You know, I might roll my eyes, but I'm happy you're going. When you say the word volunteer, it doesn't even feel like volunteer work. As Jen says, it's like part of your life. Like it doesn't feel like you're a volunteer, like you signed up for a shift. It's like totally ingrained in what you do. You know, I, I personally <laughs> volunteered probably between 10 and 40 hours a week for my career. And um, I, don't, I don't regret it. I'm so grateful that Mike, Mike, and Tim have stuck around the team since day one. I often look up to them um, for how to juggle family and SAR. Um, you know, Tim and Mike have both told me numerous times, always put your family first because this team can eat you alive because it's so awesome. And the reason that Mike, Mike, and Tim are still on the team is because they were the best. They were the best at rescuing, they were best at being team players. They, they were our leaders and that's why they've they've stuck around and, and it's why we are where we're at today is because those guys have done such a good job you know putting us here I've been thinking about retiring personally and it's like I just don't want to all right I told Tim you have to you know lock up my wheelchair and to keep me from coming back <laughs> I, I'm always amazed at how it how incredible it is to do really hard things with really good people. And being able to be, be there in people's worst days and just being able to, to, you know, top out on the hill or wherever they are and, and, and just be able to you know, see the relief on someone's face. We go to the places that the ambulance, fire trucks, and police cars can. Our basic problem is solving backcountry emergencies and Teton County and every day we are getting better at that. We are training more, our people have been more experienced, we have better equipment, technology is better and we're going to continue to get better. That's, the, that's, that's our job is to make sure we're, we're laying the foundation for our team to grow on and continue to provide that basic service better. If you had an open checkbook you couldn't buy a better rescue team than what we have. Hey if you guys are listening guys and girls be good teammates, make a difference in someone's life, and make a difference in your team. And put the effort out there and do your job and do it well and be proud of your teammates and your community. It's also amazing how much food rescuers can eat. Jen, number of burritos eaten on a rescue, like 13. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's not true though. <laughs>